One of my favourite genres of video games is the city builder. There's an immediate joy in placing parks, apartment blocks and places of business in a town to be. Sure, there's always a budget to consider, but aesthetics come first, followed closely by the needs of your people. But in recent years, I've found myself struggling with the genre, as they've grown more sophisticated. City Skyline sets the bar for would-be city builders. And yet, I've put less time into it than I did the much maligned SimCity 5. It's not so much that I can't manage statistics, but rather I have no idea where to start. Despite all the options now available to me, it's hard to know which is the right one. Ditching the grid for more natural placement, it's even harder now to make a city from scratch. Much like our modern world, there's far too much to consider the moment you're asked to start. A modern city builder requires us to work backwards from a metropolis, having the precognition to place later infrastructure like motorways, electrical poles and sewer systems. You must know the history of your districts before the schools are even in place. You must create parks out of green areas with no ecological sense. Rome wasn't built in a day, as they say. Some of our greatest cities started as nothing more than huts by plentiful resources. Rivers, forests and quarries. In some ways, they were puzzles that needed to be solved. How can our people have access to water, wood and coal in an equidistant manner? What other conveniences can help our communities thrive? And how do we balance that with maintaining the natural order? What if instead, we treated building a city like a puzzle to be solved? Rather than having complete freedom, there are a strict set of rules we need to follow. Before we can even set up a home, it must be placed against a number of parameters. Not only would this tweak give us a place to start, but it would also limit potential confusion in the early stages of our settlements. Today, I'd like to talk about three games. Dorf Romantic, Islanders, and Terra Nil. They all tackle the issue of option paralysis by making the act of creating settlements a game, with rule sets and winning conditions. Importantly, they remember the fun of placing buildings and watching a world flourish forward. Their thesis, as is the same of the video, is that we should turn our cities into puzzles. Dwarf Romantic is the first release from Takana Interactive, a four-person development studio based in Berlin. The name Dwarf Romantic roughly translates from German as Village Romance, a very fitting name for this romanticised settlement builder. If you've ever looked out of a moving car and marvelled at patchworks of fields and farmland, Dwarf Romantic makes an entire game out of stitching these quilts together. Dwarf Romantic is a video board game. I don't mean this as an insult, but rather it follows the four-man function of a game you could feasibly play in the real world. There is a dedicated playfield, playing pieces and a simple objective to follow. You could technically play it with more than one person also. That said, Dorf Romantic is a high score driven game, meaning play only comes to an end when you can no longer make any new moves, which is a good fit for my computer, and not a table where I'm going to run out of space. Each round you place hexagonal tiles on a board to build the countryside. How these pieces are aligned is how you build up your high score. For example, forests should connect to forests, rivers to rivers, towns to towns. And the more town edges that touch each other, the longer you can make a river, or the larger you can grow a forest, the more points these tiles will generate. There are also additional quests thrown into the mix that build your high score faster. Perhaps you need to hit a particular town population, or field output. The quest system highlights Dwarf Romantic's great tile generation. Like a game of chess, you have to consider not just your current move, but what'll happen a few moves ahead. You only have limited information about the next few tiles in your stack, and you can only place tiles next to place tiles. Consider, do you continue to grow out lavender fields, or do you perhaps take a chance on a new rail track that could lead to extra points down the line? The thing is, only half of your decision making is going to consider the high score, because you're going to be heavily influenced by your eye for aesthetics. Dwarf Romantic is an incredibly pretty game that renders this idyllic world in warm tones and toyetic detail. 
Like I said, you could feasibly imagine playing this as a real game, and that tactility is a huge part of the appeal. You want to build a huge world, for huge points, and to marvel at your work. Little animations like boats moving down your waterways, windmills blowing your barley, and little plumes of train steam do a lot to make this cosy world feel even more so. Dorf Romantic succeeds in arguing that we should make our cities into puzzles to solve, because by turning the act of tile placement into a game, we're actively having to consider why we'd place things where they'd go. We're not always going to have the power to have all our rail tracks go as the crow flies, as we may need to balance farmland and waterways around them. Like our own world, we have to take geography into account. Fortunately, the results will speak for themselves, as you'll find yourself falling in love with the village you built. Developed by Grizzly Games, another Berlin-based development house of free people, Islanders takes place in a time much before Dorf Romantic, and in lands further away. As its title suggests, its creative restriction are these isolated landforms in the middle of vast oceans. Your playing field is a lot more 3D, with verticality to be considered in your building placement. Fortunately, you're not expected to place whole tiles here. Rather, you place buildings on an individual basis in and around the islands. Instead of Dorf Romantic's means of marking points for connecting edges, Islanders gives you points depending on how many buildings your landmark spheres of influence overlap. For example, townhouses generate extra points near city centres and monuments. Mills generate extra points when they're placed, as you might expect, near trees. On the flip side, it removes points if two opposing buildings overlap. For example, having your homes too near industry. In the first round, you are given a choice of two building sets to choose from. These are randomly generated every time, but can only be generated from things that can be placed on the islands. For example, the choice of a farming pack or lumber pack. Whichever one you choose ultimately will affect the direction of your island. Are you woodworkers or crop growers? And will you try to be both, or focus entirely on a particular industry? Unlike Dorf Romantic, where all the pieces are generated from the same few constants, not all islands will look the same once they are complete, influenced not just by the random island generation, but also how these pieces are doled out. Unlike a modern city builder, not all choices are available to you from round one. And unlike Dorf Romantic, you know all the pieces that need to be placed in a set, allowing you to be somewhat more creative with your placements. If Dorf Romantic evokes our past history as an aesthetic quality, Islanders has us consider it a logistical one. Towns, farming, and waterways are not commoditized elements yet. Rather, they form from the interaction of landmarks. You wouldn't place your homes near industry, but you do want your industry near plentiful resources, because that's what drives getting points. But suddenly, having multiple farming sections near each other turns one part of your island into a region. Having a centre surrounded by townhouses creates, you guessed it, a city. It gets us to consider why our cities are like they are, because it is very much built around the placement of resources. Not for aesthetic points, but logistical ones. Unlike Dorf Romantic, you don't sit and nurture a single island. You could, however a lack of space and dwindling points will eventually lead you to a game over. Instead, when you hit a particular point threshold, you unlock the means to move on to a new island. Each a new biome, with their own new challenges and plentiful opportunities. Islanders believes in the notion that our communities shouldn't grow larger than necessary. There will always be new people to home, however it must be balanced with natural space and resources. Dorf Romantic leans the other way, however. It is a more modern world, which can better support more people, indicative by its gameplay where, if you're on a winning streak, you can build villages bigger than most cities. Both these games are snapshots of how our world came to be, how we started as simple islanders placing buildings that overlap with natural resources to create our first communities. This was followed by our later generations where we built whole villages, waterways and rail to create and connect a larger world. The final game we're talking about however is set in a post-city world. 
It exemplifies the thesis that we should turn our cities into puzzles. But Terranil adds the detail that we need to solve these cities so that we can return to a natural order. Terra Nil is a game I've been excited to speak about for a while. Originally developed by a three person team, it has been recently announced that a fully fledged version of the game is in development by the team behind Broforce and to be published by Devolver Digital. As part of Steam Next Fest, a demo for this enhanced version is available to try right now. For the purpose of this video, I'll touch on the demo, but we'll be focusing more so on its original prototype which is available to be bought from itch.io at a price you set. To clarify, how I found Terranil was through a recommendation on a friend's discord. The sales pitch was that you can reclaim a ruined wasteland using the means of a city builder. Their description and one look at a screenshot inspired me to pick it up immediately. And I was glad to do so. Although these worlds are initially blighted by industrial ruin, Terra Nil is, like our other games, an incredibly chill experience. It wants to put you in a good headspace. It's why there's a wonderful soundtrack uplifting the experience, and why when you bring greenery back into the world, it pops in saturated colours and animation. It is making a very bold point that we should bring nature back to our wastelands, using modern technology to achieve it. Terranil turns these wastelands into puzzles to be solved. In order to place down reclamation machines, they need to be powered by clean generators. In this case, wind turbines. However, these turbines need to be built on rocks, often settled on the banks of dry river beds. This little rule cuts the map up into zones to be tackled bit by bit. You can use pumps to fill these beds back with water, then build a structure on the water that allows you to place more rocks. Then, surrounding these turbines, you can place machines that resoil the land, followed by greenhouses that reintroduce greenery. This is the first round of Terra Nil. You must bring back a particular level of greenery to then move on to the next round, creating specific biomes like wetland, forests, and fields. Then, in the game's final round, you must rebuild the atmosphere and finally collect all of these man made structures and leave these pleasant lands to thrive without your involvement. Terra Nil is a very fun puzzle to solve, although like the other games mentioned, it can be very brutal to pull yourself back from too many poor decisions. Islanders and Dwarf Romantic are high score driven games, so they are built to eventually run out of moves you can make. Levels of Terra Nil, however, can be completed, but doing so is tougher than building successful townships in the other games. A strict currency system for buying these reclamators adds anxiety to your decision making. Although there is a rewind feature, you can only go back one step. Meaning, if you wasted all your cash building new riverbeds, you'll have to restart a scenario from scratch to try a new solution. It exemplifies the point of Terra Nil. Building communities like in Islanders and Dorf Romantic is meant to be easy. However, fixing the earth isn't. It requires hard work and good planning. And the results will speak for themselves. Fortunately, the newer version of Terra Nil does soften its edges, both aesthetically and mechanically. By moving to a full 3D presentation like Dorf Romantic and Islanders, it's a lot easier to place these reclamators, and overlapping areas of influence is improved thanks to new rotation for buildings. The physics driven water animations and the extra details in placing the reclamators also gives this version of Terra Nil the polish it deserves. Although the original prototype was good enough to stand on its own, it is very refreshing that Terra Nil will be given the opportunity it deserves to reach a wider audience because it really is something special. Although it sells itself as the reverse city builder, it might be better to call it the post city builder, as a bright vision for what our future could look like, if we're willing to solve that puzzle. Despite all their modern complexity, 
city builders still remain one of my favourite genres. These three games exemplify that, and are my favourite examples of this subgenre. As stated, they reframe the usual placement of buildings as pieces of a grander game, where consideration for where we place our pieces informs us of why our settlements are as they are. Through restriction, they allow our creativity to thrive, so that we can build new communities as great as the ones in our own world. But they're not the only toyetic city builders out there. Townscaper eliminates the worry of supply and demand, and allows you to build picturesque seaside towns to your heart's content. Concrete Jungle turns the genre into a deck builder, honing in more on the puzzle elements. If you have a particular favourite game in this subgenre, do let me know in the comments below, because I'm always keen to build more puzzling cities. I've been James, and I'll see you all in the next upload.